Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject failure analysis and prevention. And you know we are talking about the general procedure for the failure analysis and under this heading we have talked about the background, background information collection, preliminary examination of the failed component and non-destructive testing of the material which has failed. Today we will be talking about the destructive testing and its uh, role or relevance in the failure analysis. So, destructive testing for failure analysis. Uh, there is one technique which is called uh, like uh, experimental stress analysis, experimental stress analysis uh, which is uh, which combines both uh, destructive as well as non-destructive tests for uh, uh, determining the some very important aspects like determining the machine load, determining the principal strain, determining the stress magnitudes and the residual stresses. So, so, stress analysis basically involves a determination of these components which can play a big role in estimating the possibility of the failure as well as the kind of conditions which has been experienced by uh, the component uh, during the service. And for this purpose, there are number of techniques which are non-destructive in nature like X-ray diffraction analysis, XRD is used for the uh, residual stress uh, analysis as well as there are like uh, stress coatings which are used uh, uh, for determining the strain magnitude over a is very small area uh, which can help us to see the kind of the strain distribution uh, and uh, which indirectly can be used to calculate the magnitude of the stresses. At the same time, uh, the common other methods like uh, strain gauges and the rosettes are also used for calculating the strain as well as the stress magnitudes which will be experienced by the component uh, uh, during the service or the kind of the conditions which have been experienced by the component uh, which has failed. So, that may be relevant to the failure analysis. As far as the destructive testing is concerned. Uh, destructive testing, uh, why it is called so? Because the sample or the component which is being tested is actually uh, destroyed and it cannot be used for any other for further useful purposes and uh, that is why such tests are called destructive tests where the sample is broken or damaged to such an extent that it cannot be used for any other useful purpose. And there are uh, and these tests in, in case of the failure analysis are carried out for a variety of regions and so the main objectives of carrying out the destructive testing in the failure analysis is to uh, evaluate evaluate the mechanical behavior of the material, behavior of the uh, material which is being investigated. Uh, so, we get basically the numerical values in terms of like say toughness in terms of the joule or the Newton per mm square for uh, the strength, yield strength or ultimate strength, percentage elongation, ductility or fatigue, uh, the number of cycles or like uh, uh, like uh, the time in case of the creep to achieve a particular strain value. So, uh, the numerical value is identified in terms of uh, uh, their capability to take a load under certain specified conditions. So, it helps us to assess the numerical, uh, assess the mechanical behavior of the material which can be used to see whether it has been suitable or not. So, suitability of the material under the given set of the application condition is also determined when we are able to identify uh, the numerical value in terms of the uh, for the mechanical behavior of the material. 
uh, and third one is also to see. So, first is to assess the behavior of the material, second is to see the suitability for that particular application under which it has failed and third one to uh, check or to observe the effect of the service conditions if it has been there, effect of service conditions. Sometimes the due to the work hardening the material may be hardened or strengthened due to the uh, loss of the alloying elements, it may be softened. So, uh, so, the effect of the service conditions is also assessed to see if the service conditions have played any role in performance uh, or in the failure of the component under a specific set of the conditions. So, these are the three basic uh, objectives of performing and the mechanical tests related with the failure analysis. So, these destructive tests uh, in the failure analysis helps us to see the possible contribution of the material aspect in the failure if they have failed due to the deterioration in mechanical properties or the if the material was not suitable for the given application or the material in general was deficient to survive under those uh, set of conditions. Now, uh, we will see uh, what are those tests which are normally carried out to assess the behavior of the material. So, there are a number of the destructive tests which are undertaken, destructive tests which are undertaken uh, like this, there is one hardness test, then tensile test, then toughness test, then fatigue test, then creep test and then uh, there is a kind of the bend test and after that there are number of the specialized or unique tests like determination of the ductile to brittle transition temperature. So, uh, since all, all these are the destructive tests where behavior of the uh, material under the external load conditions will be assessed and each test indicates the uh, behavior uh, of the material in unique kind of the conditions. Like for the hardness test, it shows the resistance to the indentation, so which indirectly shows the resistance to the abrasion or the uh, resistance to the adhesive wear. Similarly, uh, the tensile test shows the three important parameters uh, or there, there can be more also like the yield strength of the material, ultimate strength of the material, uh, percentage elongation uh, and uh, the percentage reduction in area, reduction in area and uh, the energy it has uh, taken energy uh, for uh, fracture uh, during the tensile test modulus of elasticity. So, there are number of parameters which can be obtained through these tests and these may be of the relevance. And the toughness test, this is important to see that how the material will behave under the impact conditions and for that there are like one IJO test, another Sharpe test and in both the cases uh, the amount of energy absorbed, energy absorbed during the test uh, in terms of the joule or the Newton meter uh, is uh, quantified so that uh, we can see how much resistance it offers to the uh, impact resistance or resistance to the shock loading, higher is the amount of energy absorbed greater will be the resistance to the impact loading uh, or the resistance to the shock. So, like the low um, toughness material may be shown like the 10 joule uh, uh, like uh, car, cast iron or high carbon steels may show the 10 joule uh, like the kind of uh, the toughness uh, value for uh, uh, a standard size specimen which is uh, actually 10 by 10 nmm in cross section and while the very tough materials may offer like 150 to 200 joules also. So, depending upon the amount of energy they absorb uh, uh, to cause the fracture under the uh, high rate of the loading or impact load conditions that is what is assessed through the impact tests. And then uh, there is a fatigue test which indicates the behavior of the material under the fluctuating load conditions and we try to see how many number of cycles uh, material can withstand before failure. So, for this uh, like uh, the stress uh, 
amplitude or uh, the number of cycles it can sustain for um, uh, given uh, stress amplitude or what will be the stress amplitude uh, for which a component can withstand for a given number of cycles. So, there can be num uh, both ways where in like uh, the stress amplitude is determined for n number of cycles or uh, for uh, or we also determine that what will be the uh, what uh, that what will the endurance limit of the material means what will be the uh, stress it can sustain uh, fluctuating load it can sus fluctuating stresses or ampli stress amplitude it can sustain for uh, 2 into 10 to the power 6 number of uh, load cycles. So, th these are the parameters of un uh, using which the behavior of the material under the fatigue load conditions is uh, assessed. So, uh, next is the creep rate, creep rate is used to see that how much, much uh, how much resistance is offered by the material to the uh, strain at especially at the elevated temperature as a function of time. So, uh, for this a typical curve like this is obtained where in the material shows initially the decreasing rate of the strain as a function of time in the y axis we have a strain, uh, a strain here and then it becomes constant rate of strain becomes constant and then it occurs at an increasing rate. So, these are the three phases this is the first phase, second phase and third phase. So, this is the portion where the stress rupture will be occurring. So, if for a given service conditions this is the strain limit then this time will indicate the creep life of the component. So, means in this case creep life is determined by the the time it takes to achieve that much strain or it may be stress rupture if it is the uh, if the component can sustain uh, continue if the component can continue to work until the rupture then it will be the stress rupture life. So, the time it takes uh, for complete suppression at a high temperature um, uh, is called a stress rupture and that will be indicating the stress rupture life of the component. So, uh, strain uh, creep life is one thing and the stress rupture means when the complete suppression of the component at elevated temperature takes place that is a different thing. Normally, the creep is uh, for a uh, creep is a uh, creep life is uh, obtained through the uh, using the time um, it takes to come uh, achieve a particular strain value at a high temperature and given a stress value. Bend test is also one of the indicators where it shows that the extent up to which it can be bent without uh, cracks and uh, it also it is an also indicator of the ductility of the material and uh, uh, the ductile to brittle transition temperature. This is one typical behavior of the material which shows that how the material toughness will be changing as a function of time. So, in x axis we have temperature here increasing value of the temperature say this is room temperature and this is say 50 degree centigrade temperature on the other hand minus 50 degree centigrade temperature and said for typical carbon steel like medium carbon steel or mild steel the typical behavior which is observed uh, becomes somewhat like this where at about uh, uh, like minus 20 degree centigrade it loses its toughness very drastically and uh, therefore, you will see uh, it may be reducing from say about uh, 80 joule to uh, almost like 10 to 15 joule in magnitude. So, y axis shows the toughness and x axis shows the temperature. So, what it shows that there is a sharp drop in the temperature as a sharp drop in the toughness as a function of reduction in temperature. So, this particular value of the temperature where sharp reduction in temperature is uh, sharp reduction in temperature takes place that is called transition temperature or it is also called ductile to brittle transition temperature because in this band material behaves like a ductile material and in this side it behaves like a brittle material. So, the temperature in between where this sharp transition from the ductile to brittle behavior takes place that is called ductile to brittle transition temperature. It may be required to conduct such kind of tests in order to see the behavior of the material especially under the low temperature conditions. So, these are some of the typical destructive tests which will be indicating the behavior of the material uh, under the different type of the loading 
conditions. Uh, now we will be going through uh, the, uh, some of the uh, unique uh, inf information or uh, the kind of useful points uh, or information which can be obtained through the different kind of the tests uh, like uh, the first one is the uh, hardness test. Hardness test is very simple test, sometimes it does not require any sample preparation uh, like uh, especially the Rockwell test. Uh, Rockwell hardness test where we apply first the minor load and then major load. So, it does not require proper uh, preparation of the samples while it in other tests like Brinell test where some kind of the preparation is needed. So, it is very easy to perform it does not require very big size of the sample. So, by and large hardness tests are um, the, the uh, fall in the uh, although they fall in the destructive test cat category, but no major damage to the sample takes place when our hardness test is carried out. And when our hardness, hardness test is carried out, it gives us very useful information with regard to the confirmation of the manufacturing process which has been used for making a particular component which has failed. So, this is first useful information which can be obtained um, uh, like. Uh, hardness test helps to confirm the manufacturing process used to develop the component uh, used to fabricate or manufacture the component. It also helps to confirm whether the particular kind of the heat treatment was properly performed or not. Uh, it also helps to determine the uh, or estimate the value of the tensile strength. So, these are the three important points uh, I will elaborate little bit like a component made by simple casting and component which has been after the casting has been rolled. So, these two metals will be showing completely different behavior. We know that for the same material in cast condition it may be showing a very limited hardness value like 10 HRC and after the rolling it may increase to like say the 20 to 25 RC. So, this increase in uh, uh, this change in behavior is attributed to the uh, way by which material has been treated in course of the manufacturing. So, it can be conf confirmed if it has been just made by the casting process or after the casting it has been further processed through the deformation based uh, approaches. So, this kind of confirmation can easily be uh, done through the hardness tests where uh, it will indicate the possibility whether the particular product has been made by the casting or by the rolling process or any other deformation based process or it has been made by the uh, machining process. So, uh, there is another way to confirm that uh, uh, it not just the hardness test will be sufficient if we take just a one sample and do the microscopy of the S cast sample then it will be showing us lot of dendritic structure. This will be the another confirmation while in this case material will be showing elongated uh, the structures which are elongated and aligned in particular direction say that is the rolling direction. So, these are the features will which will be further confirming the kind of uh, the process which has been used for manufacturing a particular product. Uh, similarly, for the heat treatment purpose, uh, we know that a particular steel of like 1010 which is offering hardness of like say the very low 10 RC and if it is uh, supposed to uh, like say the normalize it, so it will offer another kind of uh, hardness and after the hardening it may offer another type of uh, the hardness. So, there may so just a measurement of the hardness will indicate whether particular kind of the heat treatment was and properly performed or not and so uh, measurement of the hardness can be used to assess whether the correct kind of manufacturing process or what kind of manufacturing process which was applied whether the correct kind of the heat treatment was uh, applied or not. So, it will help us to confirm whether particular heat treatment was performed or not. It also helps to us to estimate uh, the value of the ultimate strength because there are some empirical equations where in like use of the uh, Vickers hardness value or the Rockwell hardness value or um, uh, Brinell hardness value can be used to estimate the value of the ultimate strength. Uh, we know that whenever component is subjected to the deformation surface layer deformation say this component has been in service for long. So, during the service if it has its surface has been exposed for some kind of the deformation at the surface. So, the deformation will be causing the work hardening. So, increase in work harden increase in hardness at the surface hardness as compared to the core 
can easily distinguish if the, the work hardening effect is there at the surface or not. There is another thing which can be checked if there has been the loss of alloying element due to the exposure at a high temperature during the surface or if it has been decarburized or carburized or oppositely like if it has been carburized. So, in both the cases uh, there will be change in the mechanical properties of the component especially hardness. So, if the component has lost the alloying elements then it will be its hardness will be reduced. So, that is what we can easily check through the um, hardness measurement. Similarly, if it has been carburized then it ha its hardness will increase. So, if uh, its hardness has increased after the exposure during the service. So, this will be one indicator that either the component has been exposed, uh, uh, co component has been subjected to the change in alloying elements either in terms of the loss or the addition of the alloying elements or if it has or it has been subjected to some kind of the deformation because of which work hardening has taken place. So, such kind of the property variation related with the service conditions can be easily assessed through the simple test that is the hardness test and so further the if we have to carry out the uh, micro hardness test then certainly it requires some kind of preparation because we need we should be able to see the kind of phases and the kind of the the grains which are uh, whose hardness is to be measured. So, a, uh, one simple sample um, we cannot see the grains of the simple sample without polishing. So, we need to uh, polish the sample and after polishing uh, uh, when a little bit etching is done then we can see the grains, but uh, certainly the etchant effect is removed before making the hardness test. So, simple high quality pulsing also under the microscope can help us to see the different micro constituents and once we are able to see the micro constituents in the uh, un, uh, at low magnification then then each one can be selected each constituent can be selected for the measurement of the hardness so whether the, uh, the different constituents are of the same hardness or of the different one that is what can easily be assessed through the micro hardness uh, test method. So, micro hardness test is basically for the uh, for measuring the hardness of uh, the micro constituents. Uh, in individual micro constituents hardness can be measured while the other hardness tests like uh, the Rockwell test or Wickers test or um, a Brindle test these are the macro hardness tests where large size indenter is uh, applied on to the surface of the specimen and uh, using the standard load we try to see the kind of effect which has taken place onto the surface due to the surface due to the indentation. Now, uh, related with the destructive test there are many other uh, things which uh, we need to uh, do and sometimes we need to carry out the tests under the simulated conditions because simple tensile test may not be that much useful to and uh, show the behavior of the material under the actual service conditions. So, if the component has failed, if the component has failed under the conditions which are different from the ambient condition like either they are of the low temperature or of the high temperature. So, it is possible that the, if like say a particular component when exposed to the high temperature say one simple carbon steel is exposed to the temperature of like say 200 to 300 degree centigrade. So, this kind of the temperature is not good for certain kind of the steels because uh, if they are having the enough nitrogen and oxygen then they will show the uh, then they will show the embrittlement behavior embrittlement. So, uh, the temper embrittlement blue embrittlement these are some kind of the embrittlements which will be causing the loss of the ductility or loss of the toughness of the material uh, at a high temperature. So, in order to see if a component which was showing very good ductility like say 20 percent and was showing good toughness like 20 joules when it is exposed to the surface conditions of like say 250 degree centigrade it failed in brittle manner. So, to confirm why it has failed in brittle manner we may have to conduct the test under the simulated conditions. So, wherein the same sample will be taken and it will be exposed 
to the 250 degree centigrade and then we will be checking its behavior after the exposure for 1 hour or 2 hours and then we will try to see what kind of behave, what kind of change in its uh, uh, like the tensile properties have taken place, what kind of change in the toughness has taken place. So, any kind of the variation will indicate the possibility of the embrittlement means if the material is uh, sensitive for embrittlement in this temperature range, then it will show the increase in strength, reduction in ductility, reduction in toughness etcetera. So, those behaviors will be attributed to the exposure uh, to the exposure of the material in that particular band which is uh, sensitive for variation in properties of the material. Uh, similarly, there is another possibility uh, steel may show very good behavior like uh, simple mild steel may show very good behavior of uh, like 25 percent elongation and uh, 100 uh, joules of the impact uh, toughness. But uh, when the same is subjected to uh, th this is the these are the properties under the normal room temperature conditions. Say if this is steel is exposed to the room uh, means sub zero conditions where like say minus 20 degree centigrade and under these conditions if it is failing in very brittle manner then we need to see really how the material behave under those conditions and for that we may have to conduct the ductile to brittle transition temperature which will easily show the conditions under which it is showing the loss of the toughness as a function of reduction in temperature. So, here this is temperature behavior of like say 100 joule at like 40 degree centigrade and it is losing its toughness completely like 15 10 to 15 joule uh, in the range of temperature say minus 20 degree centigrade. So, such kind of studies may be required to see how the material will behave when it is exposed to the conditions other than the uh, room temperature conditions. So, uh, these are called uh, like uh, performing the uh, mechanical or destructive test on, uh, under the simulated conditions. So, that the change in behavior of the material uh, can be assessed uh, under the conditions which are different from the room temperature conditions. And these kind of the tests are especially useful if the very low carbon steel material which normally shows very good toughness, good ductility, but still if the failure is occurring in very brittle manner. So, if the brittle fracture is occurring under such kind of conditions, then it is good to see uh, the behavior of the material under those simulated temperature conditions, because normally such kind of the steels are expected to show very ductile uh, and very tough behavior, tough behavior and if they are not showing the behavior corresponding to those uh, con uh, uh, established values. Uh, under the conditions other than the room temperature, then it is always good to perform the test under the simulated conditions. So, this is the importance of the conducting the test under the simulated conditions. Another aspect uh, is uh, uh, also important uh, regarding the destructive test, like we may conduct a number of tests, like uh, the hardness is conducted and uh, uh, we have found the value of 20 RC for a particular steel and a specified value of the steel for a given service is like say 25 RC. So, this minor difference uh, minor lower value of the hardness as compared to the specified value should not directly be attributed to uh, attributed as a primary cause of the failure. So, here is the caution caution is that little lower strength or lower mechanical properties then the minimum spe specified values should not be considered as a primary cause of the failure. The reason for this is that uh, there are two reasons one is like the lab data, lab data uh, do not represent represent the correct behavior of the material as compared to the actual large structures. Uh, the material in actual large structures behave completely in different manner as compared to the small lab size samples. So, this is what can also be seen uh, like a, a component, a large component like this having the thickness of 25 mm and the diameter of say uh, 1000 mm. Uh, this, this was made of very ductile metal like 20 percent elongation and uh, like 50 joule of the toughness, but we despite of uh, reasonably good toughness and uh, 
uh, the good ductility this material failed in very brittle manner. So, it is not necessary that if the, the, the failed uh, the, the component which has failed in very brittle manner, if we take a small size sample, then it will show very good ductility and good toughness. So, this is a direct contradiction and the reason for this is that material in large structures behave in completely different way than what is obtained through the normally lab test data. So, and here in only the size effect come into picture. Normally, uh, with the increase in size of the component, the chance resistance to the certain kind of the failure decreases despite of having the same properties of the material. So, we know that the material property we can identify through the standard tests which uh, include like it may, we can mention that hardness value in particular range, tensile values in, uh, like uh, sigma y, sigma u, percentage elongation, percentage reduction, uh, etc. in a particular range, uh, toughness of particular value like say 50 to 80 joule uh, and, and uh, this uh, hardness of like say uh, 15 to 20 rc. So, we can specify the values for different things uh, using the standard lab data tensile uh, uh, using the data obtained from the tensile, but these tests are good for quality assessment of the material, quality of the material. But uh, if uh, same material when it is used in form of the large structures, then resistance of the material to certain kind of the failures decreases with the increase of size. And this kind of the factors include fatigue, resistance to the fatigue decreases with the increase of the size, resistance to the corrosion fatigue also decreases with the increase of size and the same is also true for the hydrogen embrittlement. Hydrogen embrittlement, resistance to the hydrogen embrittlement also decreases with the increase of uh, increase of size. So, since the material tends to behave more like a brittle material with the increase of the size, so we need to be more careful with the interpretation of the data, especially when the material uh, using the standard samples may show good ductility good toughness, but the same may not uh, reflect and replicate when the component size is large. Now, here I will summarize this uh, uh, presentation. Uh, in this presentation, basically I have talked about the, uh, the need of conducting the destructive tests and what are the common destructive tests which are conducted and what kind of caution we should uh, use when interpreting the data of the uh, destructive tests in the case of the failure analysis. Thank you for your attention.